morning. And welcome to the ceremony, the commencement ceremony for the wonderful young men and women, Sullivan West Class of 2012. Before I begin, I wanted to take a minute to introduce the members of our Board of Education who are present today and thank them for their service to our schools, our community, and to these children. Uh, I'll call their names and ask them to stand at the end so they, they can accept our applause at that time. Uh, Mary Schutzow, who is our board president, Angela Daly, who is our board vice president, Rose Trotty, who is retiring. This is her last uh, graduation. She's been a member of our board for six years. John Majura, who is uh, retiring. This is his last commencement. He's been a member of our board for three years. Noel Ann Swall. Ken Cohen, Joan Blaze, Rose Joyce Turner, and Kathleen Meckel. Not all of them are here. But I also wanted to introduce our student members, Christina Sumpleff and Sam Smith. And would you all please stand so that we could thank you with our applause. Now let me turn my attention to the graduates because it is, after all, their day. Congratulations to all of you. Today, men and women, class of 2012, this is your day, and I promise to be with you. This is, of course, what we want. But it doesn't always happen. I have just really three points I'd like to share with these men and women today. And let's start with the tough one, the sad one. You are graduating, young men and women, during the worst economic crisis that our country has had since the 1930s. We grew up listening to our grandparents talk about the depression, and to some extent, we're feeling that now. Unemployment in our county is over 9%, and unemployment and underemployment of young women like you is much higher. Some of you, probably many, will find a struggle finding your career and finding the, the lives and the hopes that you want. And I hope you have the perseverance to face up to that struggle and succeed. It will not be easy, especially if you end your education today. And that's my second point, the need for more education. When I graduated from high school 46 years ago, I'm older than dirt. <laughs> America had a much, much different economy than it has today. Finding good work that could sustain a middle class lifestyle was relatively easy. Young men, or young people, young men and women your age found lifelong work in service or manufacturing jobs that could provide for them and their families a middle class lifestyle. And they could do that with only a high school graduation or even a high school diploma or even less. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. Our economy is so different now. If you hope, and I pray for you, if you hope to live a good life where you can own a home, provide for your family, send your kids to college, and plan for your retirement, you will need much more than just the diploma we're going to hand you in a few minutes. You'll need more, more education, college, or some type of post high school training or education. And more than that, you'll need education throughout your life. Lifelong education will be your key to economic opportunities in the 21st century. My third point or a piece of advice to you is a piece of wisdom that my dad gave me when I was your age. Forty-six years ago when I graduated from high school and was preparing to go to college, he said to me, you know, Ken, succeeding in college is simple. You just have to work harder than all the rest of the kids. He smiled at me and he said, and keep in mind that most of them aren't working very hard. But that's the truth. Being successful in college or in your career or in your life is simple, but maybe not easy. You just need to work harder than the other people. You need to keep your sights on your goals, 
and we need to, to focus on it. Work hard. Be tenacious. Be resilient. Don't let the obstacles and the disappointments of life derail your dreams because I guarantee you there will be obstacles, there will be bumps in your road. And you just need to pick yourself up, stop feeling sorry for yourself, and push on. Finally, I want to mention something significant that was brought to my attention by a friend and by the father of one of our graduates just last week. Did you realize, kids, that you are the first group of graduates who spent your entire school career as part of Southern West? All 13 years, K-12, you've been part of the United Southern West Central School District. Congratulations, school guards. You know, it, it is always easy, or it's always difficult, it's never easy, to say goodbye. Um, and that's sort of what we're saying to you uh, today. But in closing, I thought I would borrow a farewell from Harrison Field, the host of Prairie Home Companion, probably a radio show that none of you listen to, and older people do. But it's a great farewell. Be well. Do good work. Keep in touch. Go to the last. We have a, a special moment uh, that I want to take right now. Uh, as I noted just now, our graduates, the members of the class of 2012, are the first group of young people to have spent their entire K-12 educational careers in the Solid West schools. In a minute, you're going to be the first person who received a Solid West diploma. So you guys are the most recent. Now, in a second, we're going to be the first person to receive a Solid West diploma. I'd like to take a moment to introduce him and to honor him. His name is Paul Yonsha. He received the first Solomon West diploma ever awarded in a special ceremony at the school board meeting of July 26, 2001. In a moment, I'll ask Mr. Yonsha to stand and be recognized. At that time, you'll notice, and those of you who know him, uh, he doesn't look as if he just graduated from high school 11 years ago. In fact, he should have graduated with his class, the Narrowsburg High School class of 1944. But four days after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, at the age of 16, he dropped out of school and enlisted in the U.S. Marines. He served in the Marines in World War II and then in the U.S. Navy during the Korean War. Fortunately, Mr. Yonsha survived those wars and returned here to his hometown to live and work. Years later, in the 1960s, when his own son threatened to drop out of school, just as his dad did, Mr. Yonsha challenged him to stay in school, and through his own actions, proved to him the importance of schooling by enrolling at that time in high school where he went on to earn his GED. Well, fast forward now 30 more years to the board meeting of July 26, 2001, where Paul Yonchek was awarded the first Southern West Diploma through what is called Operation Recognition, a program that allows school districts to award diplomas to men and women like Mr. Yonchek, whose high school careers were cut short by war. We are pleased to have Paul Yonsha with us here today, and we honor him both as the first recipient of a Solomon West diploma and for his service defending our nation in two major wars. Please join me in recognizing and thanking him.
there's just one little final chapter to this marvelous story. Today, Paul Janczuk's great grandson, Michael Feinlitz, will graduate from the class of 2012. Mike, where are you? I would invite you to step out and shake hands with your great grandpa, just like I did, or perhaps give him a hug. Thank you very much. I couldn't possibly get all that. 
Well, after much hard work and hours and hours of practice, I was able to play my heart out and try to apply colors. That's pretty much how I ended up here, giving a speech away every day. I had to conserve for a and purpose. In the long run, my hard work and determination ultimately helped me reach where I am today. My family taught me very important lessons, and I'd like to share their advice with you. My mother and father have always told me, be the best in what counts. If you can honestly say at the end of the day that you tried your hardest, that's all that really matters. Don't try to be the best at anything. It's the wrong mindset. There's always going to be someone who is better than you. If you try to be the best, you never going to be content in life. Instead, try to be the best that you can be. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your money. Keep in mind that life is easy and nobody gets to sleep around. Making it to graduation is just one of life's many challenges. Always remember, even when you try your hardest, sometimes you won't be fed. But don't be discouraged. Failures are just as important as successes. They give you experience, growth, and maturity. And a lesson from my grandmother, cherish and love others. She has always told me, make new friends, but keep the old. Some are silver, but the others are gold. It's inevitable, guys. We are going our separate ways. We have our own journeys and such challenges. And it's never going to be tough. Some who we consider close now are going to disappear from your life. However, the ones who truly are close will keep in touch. My advice to you, don't be one of the friends who's silver. Be one of the friends who's gold. Even though we are going our separate ways, that doesn't mean we have to drink the fight. A wise and studio pants in one sentence is this class. The meaning of life is just a symbol of love life, love people, love what you do, and most importantly, love what you have. Don't take anything for granted. We are all fortunate to have whatever nice things we come across, whether it be friends, talents, prized possessions, we should be easily content with what we have. We have an extraordinary class here. Everyone has his own set of strengths and weaknesses, and each is unique in his or her own ways. In reality, the secret to a life well lived can be summed up in one word love. If you want to be happy, chase after what you love. Get a job you love, and the amount of money you earn will seem really as important. Marry someone you love, no matter what that person is you, you'll be able to deserve it. Love your friends, love your enemies, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Asha Tyson, a public speaker who, through hard work and determination, went from a teenage to by earning her master's degree, once said, Your journey has molded you with a greater good. It was exactly what it needed to be. Don't think you've lost time. It took each and every situation you have encountered to bring you to the now. And now is right on time. Life may be bumpy, like a, <laughs> a random and unexpected speed bump. Precarious in place at the end of your driveway, but uh, they made us who we are, and we wouldn't take this anymore. We're very excited to invite the family, uh, students, the seniors, the band to take their place, have a final selection, and a very
faculty and staff, parents, relatives, and friends of the class of 2012. Thank you for all the support. Congratulations to everyone graduating today. Can you believe we spent over a thousand days in these buildings? I really don't know how we did it. Thinking back to the end of sixth grade, this day seems so far away. We were thinking about making the transition from the oldest to the youngest students in our high school. It was exciting, but it was at the same time. We were afraid we'd get lost, afraid the classes would be too hard, afraid we'd lose our friends. We were afraid of the unknown. But we had to go anyway. Surprisingly, it only took a few weeks for our fears to evaporate. It wasn't that bad. The change was good and the challenge enjoyable. Today we're facing the next week. We're excited to start another adventure with the spare few weeks of place we know so well. Whether we love to hear or present it any other the track of dawn, listening to the rules and transition of freedom everywhere, this place is our home. For the past six years, we laugh together, cry together, work together, and procrastinate together. We're afraid to leave that which we know so well, because we know it's safe. We know what to expect, who we're going to see, our schedules. We expect it to always be the same. No matter how much we may want something new, we are always a company leaving our comfort zone. What is fear anyway? <clears throat> it is a response to environmental challenges. An automatic response goes into our brain and nervous system to ensure our survival. It is automatic. However, it is not the situation itself that causes us to fear and flee, but our interpretation of it. We sometimes interpret completely harmless social situations or transitions in life as deadly situations. Always remember, you are the one interpreting the situation. You have the power to interpret it in any way you choose. When a change seems overwhelming and we start doubting ourselves, remember that we are the ones seeing this situation as daunting and interpreting ourselves as weak. We each have infinite potential and we only need to interpret ourselves as strong to be strong or smart to be smart. When taking on a new challenge or transition, we must trust that we will rise to the occasion. We must expect that we will, even if we don't feel ready. Like Ray Bradbury said, you've got to jump off cliffs and build your wings on the way down. From school to work to relationships, we never feel completely ready. However, we can't let this fear paralyze us from taking that leap of faith and believing we will somehow manage to survive. If we stop fighting from fear in our lives and start facing it, we can start seeing it for what it is and why it is. We can start realizing where we are creating it in our lives realize that we are creating it and let it go. We can live with that paralysis of fear, fear, live with that it's up to any grip. We have the power to let fear define us or let ourselves defy it. It's okay to fail sometimes. We always will. But we must practice questioning it. Practice jumping despite fear telling us to stop and trusting that our wings will unfold as we fall. Lastly, we need to stop interpreting what others think as something to fear. Why do we care so much? We choose how much power others have over us, and we choose how much we will achieve, and we choose how we're going to live our lives. As Kevin G. Moore said, don't let the haters stop you from doing your thing. You were there many times, you needed your help and advice. You 
departure for our home and for the many dogs and sweet for you. For this, we are eternally grateful. To our parents, thank you for always believing in us, because I know we're not always believing in ourselves. Thank you for punishing us when we need it and praising us when we deserve it. You are a force of support and help us realize that we are the greatest of our own teachers. But most of all, I would like to thank my fellow graduates. We were the last class to attend elementary school in the Southern Districts. We didn't know what to expect when we came together in the sixth grade. But now that we all come to know each other and grow so close, it's hard to imagine being apart. The rivalries between Jeffersonville, Harrisburg, and Delaware Valley may have gone for a few more years, but the bond we have in the class will never be broken. It seems like yesterday that we came here as second graders, getting lost in the hallways, hand-packing our lockers, and carrying their entire contents from our own class to class. Since then, we have made foolish mistakes and outstanding accomplishments. We've been together through the good times and the bad, and even though we are the class that never has and never will when we call it yours, we still stay strong. <laughs> the memories we share the last year of the time. As a senior class president, it is my honor to present our class gift. This year, we decided to donate a podium cover to the full match of people cover that was donated by the class of 2011. We do not have it here today, but in the future, it will make important events that sell the most such a fair region even more special. In closing, remember, today one door closes for the other opens. We all have different dreams and different destinations, as well as the ability to make it better. Congratulations, class of 2000. Physically, but socially, emotionally, and intellectually. 
You have the distinction, as been pointed out before, of being the very first class in the kindergarten as someone who has told us. While many of you remember that year, as the year we all panicked over Y2K, your parents will recall a different kind of year in panic. While the rest of the world pondered the fate of 1999 heading into the year 2000, your parents were taking, as has been pointed out before, a leap of faith. The dreaded idea of letting go, putting our babies on that school bus, for a place they had never been before, school. Despite the tears and fears, you boarded that bus, you waved goodbye, and you set out to put into motion a plan for the next phase of your life. When you arrived over there, you were waiting anxiously and excitedly for you to come. Day after day, you have proven over and over again that that wait was well worth it. You were ready to face the challenges and exceed your goals. The result of that effort sits before us now a cohesive and successful graduating class that's our fragments for the notable accomplishments that you have. For example, approximately 50 students have ever advanced regions to points. About 25 were accepted into the National Honor Society. Five of our career tech teams are members of the National Career Technical Honor Society. 30 students are graduating with academic honors. 64 will walk away with scholarships. 30 of those will have three or more scholarships. And finally, 25 of you have received notification from the college of your choice that you have been awarded financial aid packages that are significant. As a matter of fact, when you put all of this together, it reaches a goal of more than two million dollars. So in the years to come, when people report the events of 2012, they will look at history differently and then we both remember it. Our memories will focus on a special group of individuals who demonstrate over and over again that hard work, synergy, and education can lead to success. So we join your parents as we're asked to once again take that into the faith, sending you once more on your own to do what you've proven you do well, exceed the goals and expectations that you set for yourself in the next phase of your life. I ask only that you keep in mind something that Steve Jobs said, be a yardstick for quality. Some people are used to an environment where excellence is expected. Carry your tradition, move towards your goal, and move us all to a goal where we can all expect to achieve and expect excellence. Congratulations.
from the college she's attending. Jesse Canfield.
Rebecca Priscilla. The John Phillips Music Annual Award, the Barbara and Brad Carter Engineering Scholarship, the Beth Alliance Scholarship, the Delaware and Valley Arts Alliance, Dr. Barry Bowenstein Scholarship, the Jack Lyons Club Scholarship, Professional Women of Sullivan County, Sullivan County Music Educators Scholarship, Jack Bonanna Award, an annual award for academic excellence from the New York State Board of Regents, a certificate of achievement from the New York State Controller, the Triple C Award, and an MIT scholarship award for each year that she attends MIT.
auditorium to the center row, so please leave that open. I ask that you stay in your seats to all the graduates have gone outside to the lobby, and then if you would join the list Sullivan United Teachers and school-related professionals for cookies and water. We have made a slight kind of little reception for you outside. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of all the graduating class to thank everyone who made this day possible. So Mr. Reynolds will take it away.
Yeah, you can take like four. 